Hi, today we will discuss the Great Ottoman Empire, a powerful eastern state that inevitably attracted the attention of Europe. Let's consider its birth, internal structure and factors of decline. First of all, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to be the first to know about new videos. Ready? Okay, here we go. Grab your fezes and yadigans, let's begin. In the 10th century, on the territory of the future Ottoman Empire, there were two powerful states, the Byzantine Empire, heir to Rome, and the huge Abbasid Caliphate, associated with the Prophet Muhammad. Both states had already lost their former power. In the East and Central Asia, there was an active migration of Turkic peoples represented by various tribes. Many of them became Mamluks, fighting slaves, in the service of caliphs. In the middle of the 11th century, from the territory of present Kazakhstan, to the east came an organized Turkic tribe of Seljuks, named after its first ruler. The Seljuks quickly conquered Khorezm, Iran, and Turkmenistan, and in 1055 captured Baghdad, displacing the Abbasid caliphs and becoming a powerful sultanate. They dreamed of creating a great Turkish empire, seizing territories from modern Armenia and Georgia to Iraq and Egypt, pushing Byzantium beyond the Bosphorus, and taking possession of all their land in Asia Minor. Thus the Turks became the leading force in the Middle East. The growing influence of the Muslim power could not go unnoticed by Europe. The first crusade, organized by the Pope, was directed against the Seljuks and led to the defeat of their state, as well as to a significant weakening of their influence. In the 12th century, the Middle East was filled with refugees evading the invasion of the Mongols. In the 13th century, a Turkic tribe arrived in Asia under the leadership of the leader Osman. They actively opposed and dislodged the Seljuks who were trying to hold on to their power. At this time, the Mongols killed the last Caliph Abbas and Byzantium had long since been sacked by the crusade. All these events made things easier for the Ottoman Empire. The Ottomans began to invite into their ranks all who wished to participate in plunder and became a veritable horde. Tribes from the east brought with them firearms and artillery, which made the Ottoman army one of the most advanced states for its time. Nevertheless, the orders in the state itself remained archaic. Over the years, this strange balance became the hallmark of the Ottoman Empire, accompanied by savage religious intolerance. The greatness of the empire came in the 15th and 16th centuries. On May 29, 1453, Mehmed carried out the conquest of Constantinople after a month and a half siege. It was the triumph of Islam over Christianity, and from that moment the Ottoman Sultanate became a full-fledged empire. The Golden Age of Turkish history began, and the capital was moved to Constantinople, now called Istanbul. The Sultan, in addition to his title, receives the title of Caesar for the fall of the Roman Empire under the Ottoman armies, which symbolized control over the entire world. An era of great conquest begins, with the Turks controlling key maritime trade routes and the Black Sea essentially becoming their domain. Foreign traders are heavily taxed. Ottoman troops invade Syria and Iran long before it is popular to do so. The empire continues to expand eastward, taking over Egypt. The holy cities of Mecca and Medina surrender to the young empire, making the Sultan the caliph of all Muslims and the protector of Islam. The Turkish crescent moon becomes the symbol of this religion. In addition to religious significance, control of these lands gives the Ottoman Empire a monopoly on land trade between Europe and Asia, aiding European search for a route to Asia via the Western Seas and the accidental discovery of the Americas. In 1526, Suleiman the Magnificent invades Hungary, which causes shock in the Christian world, given that Hungary was one of the most powerful powerful and wealthy European powers. The Hungarians do not regain their independence until 1920. During this time, the Ottoman Empire also expands its holdings in North Africa, taking over cities such as Algeria, Tunisia, and Morocco. They create the Barbary Coast, a haven for Muslim pirates serving the empire. This further strengthens Ottoman domination of the world, allowing pirates to attack even Iceland, which had only 3,500 people at the time, and the colonies in the Americas. Such was the life of the Ottoman Empire. Despite impressive gains in conquest, the Ottoman Empire never achieved economic prosperity, focusing on money from trade fees and piracy. Within its borders lived many peoples, including non-Muslims, whom the Turks treated without respect, oppressing them and requiring them to work in their favor. Bribery and nepotism flourished throughout the empire, and all important positions were sold and bought. It was almost impossible to fight this phenomenon, and eventually the Ministry of Finance even introduced a tax on bribes. Most peasants were serfs, tied to estates that the Caliph, also known as Sultan or Emperor, distributed to his warriors, the Sippas, the heavy knights of the Ottoman Empire, ready to move on new conquests at the ruler's behest, did not own land that was not inherited, and the state could always take it back. 
Unlike other countries, the Turks had no aristocracy. All important officials, even the Grand Vizier and Sheikh Ulu Islam, the highest clergyman of the empire, were practically slaves of the Grand Sultan and could easily lose their lives depending on the mood of their ruler. There was a special kind of execution in the empire strangulation with silk rope. Pretty impressive, isn't it? There was no hereditary throne either. The main opponents of any potential ruler were his numerous brothers and uncles. The system was simple after the death of the Sultan, the first one who could run to the capital, take the throne, and get rid of or imprison the other pretenders would get the new Sultan. Moreover, killing a brother was seen as a public good to avoid potential unrest in the country. The Turkish harem, which became a source of inspiration for many European artists, was far from stereotypical. An intruder into the women's section of the Sultan's palace would not have found a paradise bathing area with naked women, but rather an ordinary place where unwed women resolved domestic issues and managed the household, ordering wine, fruit, livestock, and sending slaves to clean the palace. Velida Sultan, the Sultan's mother, was the master of these affairs and everyone, including her son, obeyed her. The Janissaries were one of the main elements of Ottoman society. In the 14th century, there was a problem of excess slaves, as traditionally captives under 20 years old could not be used. Where to put all these Christian youth, an ingenious solution was invented. A special army of half-monk slaves of the Sultan, known as Janissaries, was formed from Christian children. Their life began with ascetic conditions they were separated from their families and sent to special communities for training. The regime was very strict, there was no property, marriage was forbidden, and and their education included learning the basics of Islam and penmanship. However, there were more lenient rules for the Janissaries. They performed fewer obligatory prayers and could drink wine. All Janissaries were members of the Bektashi order, which was a Christianized version of Islam. They were armed with powerful sabers, yadigans, and muskets, and the wearing of mustaches was permitted. These professional warriors, designed to inspire terror in the enemies of the Sultan, became famous for many centuries. Over time, the influence of the order became so significant that each new Sultan sought to gain their support at the beginning of his reign. The Janissaries actively claimed privileges, developed family and business establishments, and owned private households. Their ranks were also replenished by Janissary children and relatives. At a certain point, it became apparent that much of Asia Minor was dependent on the Janissaries, primarily because because of their extensive privileges, which they were slow to utilize for the benefit of the government. Predictably, this undermined the military power of the empire. Any attempts by the sultans to introduce army reforms were met with the Janissaries seeing them as a threat to their habits. They often revolted and overthrew the sultans, installing more compliant relatives on the throne. The symbol of their protest was a large cauldron, which they overturned to show their dissatisfaction with authority. It was not until 1826 that Mahmud I, I officially abolished the Janissaries in preparation for new unrest, which was suppressed with extreme brutality. Their barracks in the capital were destroyed by artillery, the symbolic cauldron was thrown into the mud, and the Bektashi creed was declared illegal. From the 17th through the 19th centuries, the decline of the empire began. Such medieval structures were not conducive to the effective development of the state. As soon as the Ottoman Empire stopped expanding, its internal strife began. New trade routes that bypassed Turkish possessions dealt a serious blow to the economy. Their once powerful navy was defeated in the epic naval battle of Lepanto, when European forces united against it. The Ottoman army went on the offensive again in Europe. In 1683, the Turks laid siege to Vienna, but two months later the siege was lifted by the forces of the Polish Kingdom, inflicting a serious defeat on the Turks. In the battle, the Turks lost all their artillery, and the Europeans received a huge amount of trophy coffee. It was a crushing defeat that began the decline of the Ottoman Empire. After this she made no further attempts to conquer Europe, but instead found herself having to defend herself and lose previously conquered territories. Rebellions began to break out in various parts of her dominions. Some of them were suppressed, but others, such as in Serbia and Egypt, led to independence, although not complete. In the 18th century, the Turks faced hostility from almost everyone, especially active was the Russian Empire. Between Russians and the Ottomans there were 12 wars with different outcomes, including an important event the annexation of Crimea and the weakening of Turkish influence in the Black Sea. In the 19th century, the backwardness of the Ottoman Empire in all spheres became obvious. It became the sick man of Europe, surrounded by neighbors who found it more profitable to have a weak neighbor on the border than a strong opponent. In the 20th century, the Ottomans lost almost all of the Balkans due to numerous uprisings on their territory. In addition, during World War I, the empire found itself on the wrong side of the conflict and was finally divided 
divided and occupied by the victors. Outraged Turks began fighting for independence under the leadership of war hero and politician Mustafa Kemal. Following foreign interventions, in 1922 Kemal overthrew the last Turkish sultan and expelled him from the country, announcing the establishment of the Republic of Turkey. Thus ended the 623-year history of the Ottoman Empire. Thank you, dear friends, for joining me on this fascinating journey through history. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss new videos about exciting events and facts from the past. Also leave your comments below this video, I'm always happy to hear your thoughts, suggestions and requests for topics for future videos. See you all again on the channel.